The Blitz, brought to you by Optimum, starts now. Hello, everyone. Look, we're together. It's been yeah. a while. Only the second time in six weeks, the stars alive. Good to see you again. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, hello, everyone. Welcome. It's, uh, it is week six of the Blitz. It's that time of the year. We're in the middle of play, and that means a lot of teams are off. By weeks, getting ready for district play. That's right. Emerald High averaging 38 points a game, and that doesn't include one non-game cancellation. Yeah. They were hosting Abilene. The Eagles scoring at 55 a game, so the scoreboard at Bivens looked like it was going to light up tonight. And I was there, and it did. There go the Eagles onto the field, and right after that come the uh, sandstorm as we pick up the action. It doesn't take very long. The fifth play of the game, it's the Sandys. Strike first. Quarterback Jet Lopez sees an opening, and he jets through it. See ya. That's 55 yards for a touchdown. And 7 nothing Emerald High, just like that. And those parents knew what they were doing when they named him Jet. Yes. Abilene then took the kickoff, and they went on a 68-yard drive. Here's Ethan Joyner, who rips off 30. He's all the way down to the Emerald 18-yard line. And then a few plays later, Braden Henry. He's real good. And this is from the 6. He heads to the pylon, and they ain't going to get him. That's a touchdown. He goes up on the turf. 7-7 seven, seven game. After forcing a punt, Abilene then on the move again. This time Henry looks, he gets chased, he rolls, he throws, and he finds Camp Churchill. No relation to Winston, I think. Anyway, he uh, races all the way to the Emerald four yard line. That would lead to a touchdown from Dristane Payne. It's painful for the Sandys. Hey, watch this. First play after the ensuing kickoff. It is uh, Lopez who finds Bryson Brown. Talk about Jets. Look at this. He outruns all three of those guys. Wow. Four. <laughs> Dude. It's the speed burst, and he's gone. Emerald High can give up some points and score. Let's go to the scoreboard. We can update this for you now. It is actually 56. 42. 42. Abilene. Abilene. And Tascosa last night racked up 56 in their win. Let's go to the district over for PD. All right, the Dons flipping their way into district play against Wichita Falls Memorial. This one at West Texas A&M. This is the first play of the game now for Paladero. Julian Reese floats it over the middle and finds Raymond James the fifth. Wow. And he's going to outrun everyone to the house. That'll give the Dons the early lead. But wait, they're going to go for two here. And look at a little swinging gate here. Is Darian Lewis going to take the snap? Fakes it. Then he's going to find Eric Mims Jr. for the conversion. All right, then on the ensuing drive, Mavericks threatening. Joe Castle's going to roll out. Fires the end zone. That's picked off by Darian Lewis. Way to end a drive there for the Dons. And they get it going here. Reese with the play fake. He's going to go looking for Mims again. He's wide open over the middle. He's going to get a good yardage here. Look at the end, loses the ball, but thankfully on the sideline, it would go out of bounds. So later on the drive now, it's fourth down. Reese looks to pass, but then the pocket breaks down. The ball will get knocked out, and it will be recovered by the Mavericks. And they would take advantage of the good field position. Castle going to the, out of the backfield to Eric Powell, wow. and he's in for the score. So they're going to go for two now to try to tie it up. Look at this PD front Ooh. collapsing Ooh, on the hit. running back. They would keep the lead. Let's go ahead and check out <clears> the <throat> scoreboard in this one. And right now, Memorial, well, I guess it did just go final. They get the win tonight over Paladuro. All right, we've got a really interesting game down at uh, HSB Stadium. There you see former tight end Jason Witten of the Cowboys coaching Argyle Liberty Christian, getting his team fired up, coming onto the field. They're the defending Division II TAPS champions. Uh, his motivation worked. Here, uh, they're moving the ball downfield. Quinn Murphy rolls, throws, and ill-advised passes. Picked off by Boston Ladd of the home team. He's pumped up. West Plains had a rough beginning on offense. Reed Macon's pass is dropped by Slade Russell. It's almost a turnover, but the Wolves were forced to punt. The Warriors now knocking on the door. Murphy connects with Jalen Hawkins. That's the first TD of the game, 7 0 visitors. Back come the Wolves. This time, Reed Makins throws one up high over the defense into the hands of Kane White Tinsley. The junior sprints into the end zone. 7 oh, wow. 7 no game. That was nice. Uh, from this point on, the first half, it's all Warriors. On a punt return, Jalen Hawkins feels it. And he hit, dip. And you know what? He ain't going to get him. He heads up field, and he has got look Jets, too. Look at that. In front of him. There's some Division One players on that team, folks. That's 14-7, second quarter. Check out the run coming in here by Jace Garnett. He literally pushes his own people out of the way and will get into the end zone. 21-14 wow. Warriors at this point. Woo! And here's just another one, TD, for uh, Argyle Liberty Christian. Garnett gets across the goal. It was 28-7 at this point. Our said there's a lot of assistant college coaches at the game. Apparently. Tonight, so. Let's check out the score and see what, the, what we have. It is now a final 56-7. Liberty Christian wins, and it was Seminole 
putting a beating on Herford. That was a mad battle of unbeaten That's Herford's teams. first loss, yeah. yeah. All right, let's go out to Bushland. All right, it was also homecoming oh, hey, there right. tonight. Bushland. Nice, nice bets there oh, on another the nice track. Car. We're going to pick it up on the second play of the game. Quade Ferris goes out to Jenner King. And this one, all Falcons running down the sidelines. That was only 31 seconds into the game. And the Falcons, just like that, have the lead. Look at that photographer. He got now, out there and got away from all those coaches for so the Rangers. Yeah. This is on fourth Dude. down, a bad snap. The Falcons going to get great field position on that one down right around their own 20. So now following a Bush and field goal, the Rangers on the move again. Cooper Schilling finds Gordo Estrada for the Perryton first down nice. right at the sticks. Great nice. play there. Nice catch. Later in the drive, we have Estrada again coming up. And he's going to snag another one, laying out for it. That'd be another first down. Same drive now for the Rangers. This is third and seven. It's Schilling to Estrada again. Favorite Ooh. target, moving all the way down to the two. Spinner Now it's second and goal from the six after a loss on the previous play. And Estrada to Schilling. There it is for the touchdown. The extra point would be blocked. So Pushland, this is right after the kick. This is Ferris to Ty Purcell. And he'll fall into the end zone for a 55 yarder, 17 6, 301 still to play in the first. But back comes Perryton as Schilling. This pass will be tipped, then Ooh. picked. That's Jackson Fetch for the Falcons getting the goodie. So now we're early into the second quarter. This is first and goal for the Falcons and Colton Foote, not by a foot, by a mile into wow. the end zone there. That would be 23 6 in that left to go in the half. Let's go ahead and check out the scoreboard in this one. You can see it was all Bush and 44 13. Groover with a big win on the road or at home against River Road. We talked about Groover having to play Stratford next week. Uh, we know about that. That we'll have more on that in a minute. That's going to do it for the opening quarter of tonight's football fun. Great action so far. We got a lot more at hand. Now we're going to head down Highway 287 for our game of the week. From there, it's up north to the home of the Border Bulldogs. Stay tuned. We're watching the Blitz. Welcome back to the second quarter of tonight's football fun. Uh, the time now for our game of the week, a matchup of two teams playing tough non-district schedules and both with up and down showing so far. That's right, Stratford Elks 2-2 two and two on the season. They made the long trip to Childress, the hosting the Bobcats, who are 2-3 and three so far. Both teams have lost the state rank. Sunray, that's the <laughs> common factor. Yeah. This is the final non-district game for both. We're heading out, out to Childress. Game of the week, brought to you by 2-8 Construction. Pre-game handshake. Both teams get ready for a great night out in football out at Childress. This is a huge battle of defense here. This resulted in Childress punting. Colton Teichelman, though, punting it, and it's going to be blocked. Landing in the hands of his teammate, Cutter Bruce, who would take it several yards before being taken down. So we're now into the second quarter. It's scoreless. Bryce Braden right off the snap. He's yeah. keeping it, and he's just shoved out of bounds right before the end zone. But that wouldn't stop Stratford because on the next drive, the next play, I should say, Braden. Just going to punch it right in behind his line for the touchdown. 7 0 Stratford in the second. So now later in the game, Braden looks for an opening. He's going to throw it, but that one's going to be overthrown and then wow. picked off by Chaz Hightower for the Bobcats. But now Jonah Reed looks for his opening, only this time he's going to get intercepted wow. by Chase Lantelm. And uh, that's the ball for Tra Stratford. Let's go ahead and check the scoreboard. I can tell you they got more scoring in the second. Yeah. You see Stratford got the win 21 14. We'll head now back out to Fair Park Stadium and post game with Dalton Williams and head coach Jonathan Murphy. Well, you just saw Stratford come out on top in the battle of the defense. Now, coach, you talked before the game, you really wanted to run that ball. So talk to me about kind of how you thought today's game went. You know, I thought our offensive line to start with played with a ton of confidence and they were really, really physical. And I'm just so proud of the way that those guys played. That's the way they prepared all week. We're just really excited about the efficiency in our run game. And one thing that I saw is it was just constant back and forth. Like you guys were, you were trying to break through their defense. They were trying to break through yours. What was that key of breaking through their defense and getting to 21 over 14? Well, you just have to keep grinding against really good teams, and these guys are fantastic. It was exactly the kind of game that we wanted for our kids to finish up our non-district play because we were going to have to battle the whole time, and, and it was a great game. And that was going to be my next question is, you've got district play next week. What do you think you guys need to work on, or do you think you guys are ready for district play next week? Well, we're always, we've always got something to improve on. Number one for us, it's, it's trying to eliminate neg negative plays. Um, little penalties, procedural things. We started the game off with some procedural penalties, not that we could dang sure eliminate that would help us a ton. 
hanging on to the football, securing the ball. There's there's just some things that we'll take away from tonight that are really going to benefit us. But I'm pr really proud of our confidence. I'm so proud of our kids. Well, Stratford starts district play on the road next week against Groover. Coach, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that wraps up Game of the Week. Lee, DJ, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Dalton. I appreciate it. Let's go to Border, hosting uh, Denver City. Uh, we pick up the uh, first possession. It's Hunter Randall to Tyler Brooks for a Bulldog first down. That's a nice pass. Nice little yeah. sidearm action on that one. Well, later in the drive, the Bulldogs, it's Randall to Ryler Moreno for a Border first down. And he's still going. And he's finally knocked out of bounds. Ensuing play, Borgers, Tyler Brooks in for the touchdown right at our camera. Don't hit him. Yep, there you go. 7 nothing Bulldogs with a conversion. Denver City tries some trickery here. Ball to Andrew Velasco, flips it to Abraham Velasco. That's a nice With Borgers to Sean Speed, not pull. He makes the tackle. Look at that. Borgers deep yeah. and stepping and reading it all the way. All right. Borger takes over on downs. Here's Tyler Brooks coming right at our camera for our Bulldog first down. Don't, they don't run over anybody. All right. Uh, here's uh, Bulldogs later in the drive. Jaden Daniels, that's a familiar name in football, for another Borger first down. They would go on to take the early lead. Let's go to the school board, and I will show you that uh, Borger blanks Denver City, Dalhart over Muleshoe. You got some more scores? Yeah, we have a uh, Canadian. They fall to shallow water there. Friona falling to Farwell. We have Guymon over Tulia. Dimmitt with the battle there with Slayton. Slayton coming out on top in that one. And then finally, this Vega Memphis game was canceled today due to uh, the manhunt underway in Memphis. So best wishes to everyone in Memphis. Time for our player of the week. And this week, player, player of the week, week brought to you by Glass Doctor. I spoke too soon. Sorry, Glass Doctor. Uh, this week's player of the week goes to Armando Lujan chasing down the state passing record. But he's a two way player. He let his defense do the talking last week in the showdown with the Canadian. It was a ball hawk on the defensive side of the ball. Intercepting three passes to help secure the win for the Bobcats. On offense, he threw for 160 yards and two scores. Congrats to Armando on a great game. We've got more highlights still to come. You're watching the Blitz. And welcome back, Football Friday. And the Blitz told you on our opening tonight that uh, it was a light night of 11-man action, so we turn our attention to the world of six-man. Yeah, almost as many six-man games <laughs> as 11-man games this week. And since it's a light week of games, we moved to Thursday night game. In fact, just one six-man game last night. We're heading east on I-40. This one out in Groom. First, we're going to pick it up with Silverton taking on Groom on the first drive of the night. As Silver strikes first, Jace Alvarado going to take the handoff. Nice stiff arm here as he carries the ball fender into the end zone, making it eight nothing owls. But Groom would answer right back. Grayson Peak looking to throw. And he's going to decide, hey, I, I can run this. And he does right near the end zone. That wow. would tie the game up at eight. Let's go ahead and head to the scoreboard in this one. We can show you it was Groom taking care of business last night over Silverton. Happy with the big shutout win over McLean. Will Dorado falls to Kingdom Prep. Cress over White Deer and Valley over Claude. All right, let's come back to town for a game. We have the homeschoolers uh, taking on San Jacinto tonight over at uh, that uh, Rick Klein Sports Complex, that new field they kind of put together for uh, San Jacinto. First series of Warriors have the ball. They're going to run it, but it's a fumble. That's not good. It's recovered by San Jacinto's Jacoby Veach. All right, a few plays later, it's uh, Matty Richard who goes 30 yards. It's Richard or Richard, depending on where you live. Uh, but the touchdown, the conversion was good. It was 8 nothing Patriots. After a punt by the homeschoolers, Patriots on the move. Richard rips off the big run, but it's a fourth down. He didn't make the yardage, so the ball over to Pagia. Pagia looking to score. Quarterback Landry Johnson is epitomized as six-man football. He runs this way. He runs that way. And he stops. And he runs back. And he throws it. And it was incomplete. Let's check out a bunch of scores we have tonight. All right, we have San Jacinto winning. Amherst gets a win. A couple of more scores for you tonight. It was a Booker winning along with Whit Harrell getting that win over Nazareth. That's a big game. And a couple of more scores for you. We have the uh, a forfeit. Miami beats Hart and Guthrie over Headley. That's Headley. Paducah also a win over Knox City. You got any out-of-state scores, DJ? Yeah, we do. We have Balco Forgram shutting out Kremlin. But Texoma with a big win at home. What else do we have here? Hooker with another shutout as well. All right, now into the land of enchantment. Clovis falling to Las Cruces. Portales leads in the fourth quarter. And more? No, we That's don't. about okay. it. Yeah, that'll wrap us up. Okay. Uh, it's time for our play of the week. 
Play of the Week, brought to you by Amarillo College. All right, for that, we're going to head back to the home of the Bush and Falcons here on there. It didn't take long as the Falcons would soar and score on the second play of the game. Quade Ferris hitting Jenner King, faking it out of Fender, and nothing but turf in front of him. 69 yards was the score. That game was just 31 seconds old. Congrats to Jenner King for a great play and our play of the week. We'll wrap up the show after this time. Band of the Week, brought to you by Paramount Collision Repair. All right, thanks for the Happy Cowboy Band under the direction of Mel Brooks. There aren't many of them in the band, but well done. Welcome back. It's the final quarter. We only have about 30 seconds left. Football weekend's coming up. WT has a bye. Eastern's home to Central Washington. What do you got? Yeah, we have the usual SEC triple hitter. You could, the big one there, Texas A&M's host of number nine, Missouri. That's the early game. Primetime game. We'll see Tennessee taking on Arkansas Tech on the road at Arizona. And we can tell you the WT Volleyball beat Angelo tonight, and Tascosa also won, and the Wranglers were losing. That's going to do it for a Football Friday. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. We'll see you this weekend.